Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week we're up to episode four of Portrait Artist of the Week. This is season two. I'm going to do a portrait painting of this week's sitter, Samira Ahmed, and I'm going to be using some A2 mixed media paper by Dalla Rowney. And I'm going to start out my drawing with uh, some watercolour marker pens by Winsor & Newton. So I'll put you on to time lapse just for the drawing and maybe for the background, but then we'll do real time for the actual painting. <music> So the, uh, the drawing's done, and although I showed you three different colours of the watercolour markers, I actually ended up just using the mid-blue. And I've got a reasonable likeness uh, structure of the heads in place. So what I'm doing, going to do now is I'm going to switch to these uh, interactive acrylic paints by Chroma. Um, and I have on my palette, I've got cadmium yellow light, titanium white, alizarin crimson, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So I'm using a flat synthetic brush. It's about a half inch wide. It doesn't really matter too much, but um, you know, a flat brush I think is, is a pretty good place to start when you're blocking stuff in. It's pretty adaptable. So I'm going to start by taking some of the titanium white and you know a little bit of the cadmium yellow and mix those those two together. Then we'll take just a touch of the alizarin crimson. You've got to be quite sparing with that alizarin crimson because a uh, little goes a long way in terms of creating uh, depth of colour or strength of colour. Just added a little bit more. I'm going to take a small amount of the ultramarine blue as well and put that in. I, I have a feeling I did this in a recent video. I've put, I've put in too much and it's come out perhaps a little a little more bluey than I would like, but but looking at it again, it's not too bad, not too bad. So I've mixed that pretty thoroughly. Uh, the interactives of the acrylics, where if you keep them, you know, uh, moist with a water spray, which I'm just trying to get working. Here we go. Just helps stop the paint drying out, and um, I'll do the same on the paper as well. Now that might cause the watercolor marker to run, but that's not a big problem. The the acrylic will cover that up pretty pretty well so let's have a look so i've got to be careful to kind of follow my drawing where it's correct but if it's wrong you know i want to be i want to correct it as well so it's coming out a little bit of a dull gray this this um color i've mixed up which wasn't my intention but it should do for now i think it's a good kind of mid-tone to start off with and i can brighten up certain areas in you know in a bit the main thing for the moment is to just get the white of the paper covered now as I apply the paint here what I'm doing is I'm generally following the contours of the face so for example the brow goes down there and you know not all of the brush marks that I put down not all of them will show up but if some do then I feel it's advantageous to, you know, make use of make use of those brush marks. Why not have them help you out a bit in terms of creating an illusion of three dimensions? So again, curved brush strokes for the cheeks. You notice I haven't really filled in the, the eye too precisely. And I painted right over the eyebrows as well. And you know, some of my drawing will show through this first coat of paint, so it's going to be there as a guide. But if I do happen to lose, lose all of the drawing, then, you know, I'll just have to 
to, to redo it, basically. The thing is, I, I find that even if you lose a mark, the kind of the work you did in terms of the brain work and the observational work, you know, you've done that work. So that's kind of in your memory bank, even if you don't know it. And the observation you made previously is never a waste. So so even if you end up losing some of the initial marks, you know, you still benefit from from doing that initial drawing. Almost there, I'm blocking in the, the face. Just pop in a little touch of that same colour where the earlobes are showing, showing you know, from, uh, from underneath the hair. And seeing as, I've got, seeing as I have just enough paint on the palette to do so, I will block in that little eyelid there as well. And actually, I think I'll just do the same with the lips as well, just to give me a, a base colour to, to work from. Now, to allow me to do a little bit of blending on the painting, when I apply the second coat, I'm just misting the sur surface of the paint with a little bit more water. And then I'm going back to my palette now. And next I want to put in some lighter colour. So going back to the titanium white. Once again, a little bit of the cadmium yellow. And a touch of the uh, alizarin crimson again. And that's all I'm going to do for this stage. This is, this is going to be kind of the beginnings, beginnings of my high, highlight colour. So once again, I'll work my way around the face. Now that the lighting we've got today is a little bit mixy. It's not a particularly, you know, one direction light source. So there's actually a cooler reflected light on the right hand side of the face than there is on the left. So what I'm going to do is use this warmer color. And that, you know, that's a, that's a kind of a general statement really, but just going to build up a little bit of form on the face. Just put in little patches of this lighter yellowy colour, or orangey colour I should say, that I've mixed up here. So I'm not being overly precise, but I am being careful in terms of the shape of patches of paint that I put down. And applying this second coat also allows me to kind of cover up some of my earlier drawing as well. Now, having done that, once again, a quick mist with the water back to the palette and I'm going to pick up some more of the titanium white. So I haven't cleaned my brush. I've still got that previous color on there. And so essentially all I've done is lighten up the version of the color I've already got. So having got that on the brush, now I'm going to go back around again. And look for highlights within those kind of soft highlights that I that I put down a moment ago. Once again, I'm thinking about the contours of the face. So you could almost imagine, you know, 
what would your brush do if you know if the sitter was uh, uh how can we put it um open-minded enough to to allow one to to kind of run the, the bristles of the brush over the face what path would the would the bristles follow so for example if i was going to do a brush stroke here you would go along the cheek over the nose and then along the cheek if you you know if you wanted to do a continuous brush stroke so it's kind of a good way to think of things, although it's, you know, perhaps an odd thing to do in, in real life. Um, but uh, it helps you kind of visualise how to put the paint down, I guess, is a good way to, to describe it. Now, if you're struggling to see, um, excuse me, <clears throat> if you're struggling to see where the highlights are, uh, and as I said, it's fairly soft lighting we've got today compared to some weeks on Portrait Artist of the Week. Um, then a good tip is to, you know, like as always, is to is to squint at your reference photo or in, if you're working from life, squint at the sitter or whatever it is you're painting, even if it's a landscape or a still life. And that you know really makes the the differences in tone much clearer to see. Once again, a quick spritz with the water spray, and the trick is not to you're not trying to soak the paint. You just want to uh, keep the surface of the paint moist. You know, so it's just barely damp, really. And what, I, what I'm doing, and I didn't, sorry, I didn't mean to do that off camera, is I've just added a touch of the alizarin to the same colour I mixed up previously. And let's see what that looks like when we add some of that to some areas of the face where there's a warmer colour. So things were looking a little bit monochrome before, you know, which is, you know, it's a good place to start. But generally speaking, it doesn't matter who you sit, who you're painting. Uh, generally speaking, there's a vast multitude of colours uh, within the, the face, you know, just because of all the different uh, well, variation in skin colour from one side of the face to the other, you know, with everybody, unless they're, you know, unless the person's wearing tons of makeup or something like that. But then because the face has so many different angles to it as well, it picks up the light and reflected light in, from different directions. For the next step, I want to mix up the beginnings of a shadow colour. So once again, I'm going to take some of the cadmium yellow. And a little bit more of the alizarin crimson this time. And then a touch of the ultramarine blue and this time I'm just going to remove some of that because I think I picked up a bit too much. I'm going to mix that fairly thoroughly. That's come out a, perhaps a little bit too... Oh, I don't know, that might be all right. I'll just put a little bit more of the alizarin in. And we'll see, we'll see what that looks like when we put it down on the, on the painting. I have previously uh, just sprayed the surface of the painting again with the water. Um, so a good place to start here would be underneath the chin because there's quite a strong shadow there. So if my colour isn't quite right, I'm going to be going over it again in a bit anyway. It's, it's not too bad, actually. Not too bad for a, for a starting point. So there's a bit of shadow down there on the neck. A little bit there. 
and then now let's move up to the to the face which was the main reason you know i've mixed up the color so there is a little bit of shadow coming down here Oops, that, that, one, that went on a little bit too heavy. Just lift off some of that with my finger. But there's a line of shadow on the right hand side of the nose, which I'm not convinced I've got quite right there. But you know, not too bad for the moment. There's a little line of shadow here uh, because in the in the screenshot I'm working from, she's partially smiling. I haven't quite got this nose right, so let's uh, let's put the shadow. We'll try and correct that with a little bit of shadow. Uh, it's not going to be a one-stop correction, but I can kind of begin to improve it. That's a little bit more like it. And there's some shadow here in under the eye. Here could do with being a bit darker on the right, a bit of shadow down there. So we've got the beginnings of modeling of the face, but I'm just going to go one step darker with my shadow color. So let me just uh, keep the surface of the painting ever so slightly wet. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, on the palette, just drag my brush so there's not too much um, paint on it pick up some alizarin crimson and mix it into that paint I just dragged off some of the ultramarine blue so I'm going much closer to a purple now really let's see what that looks like for our deep sh deeper shadow color so there's a little bit under the chin here probably needs to be a bit more bluey than this so let's add a little touch of blue there but, uh, begin to reintroduce the eyebrows so this brush is a little bit too big for the job really but nevertheless that's not too bad um, right so I'm gonna while I've got that color on my brush I'm gonna add in some more blue and I think I'm going to use that. It's not quite the right colour, but it'll, it'll, again, it'll do for a start, and that's the main thing. So we'll just keep the surface of the painting ever so moist. Moisten the paint on the palette as well. And going in with that colour that I just mixed up, I'm going to use this to begin to paint the hair. Now, one of the great advantages of keeping the surface of the paper moist is that when you put the even the first layer of paint down, you're going to get some much more characterful brush strokes than you would if you just kind of put a thick layer of acrylic down because, because the, the brush marks are going to show up and there's going to be much more variation in thickness of the paint you put down. Now, obviously, it depends what you're trying to paint and the effect that you're trying to achieve. But hair typically has, you know, quite a lot of subtle variations in tone within it. So it doesn't hurt at all to, um, you know, automatically include some of those variations right from the get go. Now, as I do this, I'm taking, you know, quite a bit of care to ensure I don't you know, mess up the outline of the face and improve it if I can improve it um, as, I, as I look. So I'm always looking, always never really trusting what I've done before too much. I mean, I ho I'm hoping I didn't do too bad a job, but uh, you know, things do tend to wander as we progress through the painting. If you, if you can, it's best to be ever alert. And I guess that's kind of the eternal quest of the artist really is, you know, trying to stay in the moment and um, not be distracted by by one's own work, really. Now, 
Now here, I just want to make sure I get the line of the jaw correct and the part of the neckline that's showing as well. And we'll give a similar treatment to the right hand side of the hair. Now there are quite a few kind of, uh, you know, tendrils of hair or wispy bits coming off of the edge of the silhouette of the hair. I'm pretty much leaving those for the moment. You know, if, if there's a big kind of clump of hair or a big gap uh, in the hair, then I'll include that. But, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not going to hint at it like, the, like for example, what I'm just doing right now, but um, trying to not do too much detail at this still relatively early stage of the painting. So just treating it as a mass of hair, really. All right, so having misted the painting with water and my palette, I still haven't cleaned my brush, but I'm going to grab a load of the ultramarine blue and mix it into the colour that I've been using previously, but now I'm gra grabbing some burnt umber and mixing a healthy amount of that in as well. OK, and that's going to give me a pretty dark colour with which I'm going to paint the, the shirt that Samira is wearing. So just like the face, uh, I'm thinking about the way the cloth is falling. So, for example, the, the lapel, well, it's not really the lapel, but kind of the opening of the shirt is going to kind of fall that way. But when I come up to the shoulders, it's, you know, it's better to kind of just put a line in there. But even then, when we get to the top, we can kind of curve the brush strokes a little bit so that they kind of fold over the, the top of the shoulder. Now, the, um, you might be able to see the papers beginning to buckle a bit because I've been, even though I've only been misting a little bit of... Uh, water on there it's enough to make this paper buckle now this mixed media paper is pretty darn good actually so once this dries out after I've done this first layer I'll probably let it, things dry out a bit that's going to flatten pretty much completely and if it doesn't then you know when I untape it at the end of the painting uh, it, it will flatten out then so now I've left an, an awkward gap there of uh, unpainted flesh so I'm going to kind of cheat a bit and just whip the the opening of the shirt into a different shape just to just to make my life easier really um, okay so let's uh, fill in the right hand shoulder so I'm just grabbing a bit more of the burnt umber and a bit more of the ultramarine blue and mixing them together and that's come out a bit too brownish I want to keep it reasonably in keeping with the other side that's a bit more like it So things are starting to take shape a little bit. Now, while that paint is still wet, um, and as I already have this kind of nice light colour here, I'm going to take some of that and pick up a lot of titanium white. And um, I'm going to see if I can kind of begin to hint at the patterning on the shirt. So we'll, we'll go over here to begin with, where it's not, it's not too important because it's off on the edge of the shoulder. That, that works reasonably well. So let's put another one of these uh, feathers in. Now, what, you know, when I come to do this, I've got to be, it's just something I want to hint at, you know, uh, for the final painting, I want people to look at the face. But, you know, let's say Samira ends up looking at this on Instagram or something, you know, a bit of a long shot, but sometimes it happens. Or in general, you know, your, your sitters probably want to go, probably going to want to be able to recognize the shirt that they were wearing now yeah depending on the style of painting you do or want to do 
you know, you don't necessarily have to do, you know, a completely um, photorealistic representation of the shirt um, or the pattern on the shirt. The idea is just to kind of pick up a certain fla flavour of it. So, you know, so they go, oh, you know, hopefully they like the the likeness and the, and the general atmosphere and look of the painting. But then, yeah, maybe after a couple of minutes, they go, oh, oh, that's the shirt you've got, isn't it? Yeah, that's the idea. It's not really meant to be, from my perspective at least, I'm not overly concerned with depicting the shirt in ultra high levels of detail. That went on a little bit heavy, but just, just about got away with that. OK, and that's all I'm going to do for the shirt for now, at least. So I think I'm going to let the paint dry and we'll come back when it's totally dry. Although I said I was going to let the painting completely dry, I actually changed my mind. I just want to get going on it. So I, I'm grabbing some ultramarine blue mixed with white and that the face has dried a reasonable amount, actually. But I thought to myself, well, I can I can always, you know, work on the eyes because I haven't done anything to those yet. And the other thing I noticed is uh, this eyebrow I've made too low now, so I need to fix that in a bit as well. So anyway, I've switched to a small filbert brush. And I'm just putting uh, that blue colour in on the right hand side of the right eye. And now I'm going to pick up a bit more white and lighten that same colour somewhat. And we'll use that for the left hand side of the eye. And if I go over my, my line drawing of the iris, that's OK at this stage. Now the, the, the shape of the eye has become a little bit obscured here on the left eye, so I need to redefine that. So I need to look quite, uh, look quite carefully at my reference. I'm going to use that same colour pretty much everywhere for that part of the eye. Uh, now on the screenshot, uh, it's very difficult to see the colour of the eyes actually in my particular screenshot, but they, I checked on Instagram and Sky Art says, uh, said Samira has brown eyes, so we're going to go with that. So I've still got this kind of pale yellowy colour here on my palette and I'm grabbing a good amount of burnt umber and I'm hoping that's going to give me a brown which is a little softer and just a little more, you know, a little more realistic for an eye colour than the burnt umber. So that's not that's not too bad. Not, not too bad a place to start anyway. So sticking with the the same brush. Let's go to the, the right eye. And at this stage, I really just want to put in a disc. Of colour or a partial disc. Um, and get the iris in the right position within the eye. That's not too bad. OK, now we'll go over to the other eye. Same idea. There we go. So that's beginning to come to life a little bit now. And I think what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to use that same colour. Uh, yeah, this isn't going to be the final colour of the mouth, but um, tone tone wise, it's not too bad. So let's. Uh, let's paint on the lip. Yeah, so I mean, it's actually way too dark, but nevertheless, um, I think it's going to get me going in the right direction. But I will come back and fix that momentarily. OK, so uh, now I need to adjust the, the colour on the lids of the eyes. So what I'm going to do is just drag out my brush on the palette pick up some of this pale pink that I had before, get a touch of the alizarin and add some of that. Maybe 
maybe a touch yeah maybe a touch of this color as well and again perhaps not quite right but again it's going in the right right direction so the um this upper eyelid on the right hand side is in shadow and there's quite a strong shadow there as well then i can probably use that same color over here and kind of create an eyelid as I go as well for that side. There's a little bit of a shadow under the eye. I've picked up some of the, the paint I applied earlier, so I just wiped that off my brush. Um, so you know, the advantage of working wet in wet is you get lovely soft edges. Uh, and some blending but the disadvantage is you sometimes get overly soft edges and unintentional blending so it's a case of you know making things work as they happen so I'll soften that blue line I've got from my showing through from my initial drawing but that's a bit heavy under the lower lip there probably put a bit there though okay now the color I used for the shirt is actually going to work quite well for the eyelashes um, I think Samira is wearing some makeup um, so the eyelashes are really quite dark so I'm going to use that color same filbert Now the shape of this upper lid or the edge of this upper lid is quite quite critical um, in terms of trying to capture a likeness. not too bad and I think I can use the same color for the uh, the pupils in the eyes actually um, let's see if we can make that work so just a little touch there and also a touch there as well I've just cleaned my brush. I'm just going to pick up a, a little bit of titanium white. So I don't know how well you can see that, but um, let me see if I can get this in focus for you. N not really, but there's there's a basically just a little drop of paint drooping off the off the end of the brush, and I'm just going to touch that to the um, to the eye. to introduce a highlight in the eye and the same again for the left so that's beginning to bring the eyes to life all right so next i've taken some ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson and uh, just a touch of cadmium yellow and what i'm going to do is use this so it's not exactly again it's not exactly the right color but it's not too bad going to use this to correct and redraw this right hand eyebrow
and then similar treatment for the left hand brow as well And that same colour I can use for the nostrils as well. So simply a case of looking at the shape of the nostril at the angle where we happen to be viewing it at. Putting that in place. And then I think now I'm going to go back to the lips. But actually, before I do that, I just realised I can use that dark colour that I mixed up earlier for the shirt. And uh, I can use that for some of the shadows in the hair. You know, again, I'm just trying to be... Try, I, always, I always try to work as efficiently as possible. Um, now, painting onto the, the dry hair actually also has an advantage because I can get some textured marks from this kind of dry brush effect you get. So I'm dragging reasonably thick paint across that first layer of paint that I put down. So, you know, I'm definitely not trying to paint individual hairs here, but just looking at the larger shapes within of shadow within the hair and the direction in which the hair is falling. OK, and now I will go to the lips. All right, I've returned to my filbert, so, and I've got some titanium white, which I'm mixing into that pale blue colour from earlier, grabbing some of the alizarin crimson. And uh, well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. So what we'll do is just make sure that's thoroughly mixed on the brush. And... I will then begin to add this colour to the left hand side of the lips. And now I need to add a bit more of the alizarin. Maybe a touch of blue, but not too, not too much, just a little, little hint, just to get a kind of pale, pale purple, I guess, violet, no, more of a purple. So that's a little better, that's, and that's bringing a little bit of warmth, warmth to the face, which uh, was much needed, I feel. So while I've got that colour on the palette, let's see if we can use that elsewhere. So I think I can actually use some of that up here, just above the eye. And I have plans for the right-hand side of the forehead here, but we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So, you know, the, the way I tend to work is at the beginning 
of the painting. I'm very, very much looking at the reference or the sitter, the structure of the face and trying to get that as close to reality as possible. But then there comes a stage in the painting where, you know, I want the painting to kind of take on a life of its own. And that's kind of where I am now. So I'm now not looking at the colours too much. I'm more just kind of going with the flow a little more to try to kind of create something beyond the photograph. That's my hope. But um, from my point of view, adding those little pops of colour here and there has really started to, to bring things to life a little bit more. So I'm quite pleased with that decision at the moment. OK, so let's go to this right hand part of the forehead. Reasonably strong, yet still somewhat subdued reflection or bit of reflected light on the right hand side of the face there. So I'm grabbing some uh, titanium white, ultramarine blue. And that's probably not bright enough, so I'm going to grab some more of the white. And just a touch of that pink that I used for the lips. Just want to make it a little bit, just a little bit, you know, purpley blue. I don't want it to be kind of sky blue. Let's see how that looks when we put it down on the on the painting. That's not too bad, actually, not too bad. OK. Now, there's also a similar colour here on the on the left, but it's just a little bit lighter. So I'm just adding a touch more, not very much, just a touch more titanium white. Perhaps even put a bit on the, the nose there, and down this side of the bridge of the nose. Not sure how well that bit worked. Let's just lift off some of that with a damp finger. Well, okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, yes, so same colour. There's a line of that's catching the light just underneath the lower lip. touch there, the side of the neck, a little bit on the ear, that started to bring things to life a little bit. Now at other places on the face there are highlights which are a little warmer in colour, so again I'm grabbing my titanium white and my cadmium yellow, some more titanium white and just a touch of the alizarin crimson. That really was the smallest of, yeah, you know, I couldn't proactively take less um, if I tried. We'll see, we'll see how that works. OK, so here on the on the brow, there are some little creases in the in the flesh. And to be honest, the colour I'm putting down is a little too bright, really, but I'm going to go with it for the moment. And just see how, how well it works. Some on the brow of the nose. Now, in the same way, there was a kind of a, a line of 
cool highlight on the underside of the lip there. There's a line of warmer, warmer highlight on the, above the upper lip, so we'll, we'll pop that in. Oops, a little bit heavy there. A bit here as well on the cheek. And there's a very bright highlight just on the right hand side of the nose. So I'm grabbing uh, quite a lot of titanium white and just mixing it in with that same colour that I've got on the brush. I'm just squinting at my reference. There we go. And I need a bit of stronger shadow under the nose there. And to create that, I'm going back to this mid-brown that I have from earlier, adding a little bit of the alizarin. And that might, that might actually do it, to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, that's worked reasonably well and I've, I've kind of lost the line of the nose a little bit so I just need to refine that kind of get that a little more in keeping with the sitter yeah still not quite right I'll come back to that in a moment um, let's put a little shadow in here. Make things a bit darker on the corner of the eye there. And there as well. And in the corner of this eye as well. And then there's some shadows kind of playing on the face being cast by the hair. So I can kind of dark, use that same colour to darken those areas. Need a little more shadow on the neck from the, you know, from the under, underside of the chin and down here on the chest. And this ear needs to be a bit darker as well, but that's, that's improved things quite a bit, I feel. And I think what I'm going to be able to do, or I hope, using that same colour but switching back to my flat half inch brush, I'm actually going to be able to use that same colour for some of the highlights in the hair. Let's see, let's see how well that works. It's not too bad. And what I'm doing here is just feathering the tips of the bristles over the surface of the paper. And because the flat brush is a little bit frayed, it's going to kind of automatically create some hair texture for me. So again, it's quite an efficient way to do it. I can take some of that over to this side as well. But, but not, not too much. Perhaps a little bit up here. Oops. So the, hi the highlights on the left side of the hair are reasonably warm, but on this side they're quite a bit cooler. In fact, in my photo they look almost blue. So I've just grabbed some ultramarine blue and put a little bit of white in it. Um, and it's probably not, you know, it's probably not quite this blue in real life, but uh, let's see what we get. I quite like the effect that that has, and I'll, I'll add some of that to 
the the shirt here just to kind of pick up some subdued highlights on on the cloth now for the necklace that Samira's wearing I'm going I'm going to start off by going back to this mid brown that I had earlier just to use that for the shadow color on the face and I'm just going to put in with my little filbert a line there and then kind of a patch of shadow here and then a little bit of a line there using the same brush and the same color just going to draw partial circles for the earrings which are barely showing up at the moment but then I've mixed up um, cadmium yellow with the tiniest amount of alizarin crimson and a good amount of titanium white and I'm applying that to indicate some of the highlights of the necklace We'll do the same for the earrings. Just got a little bit too much paint on the brush, so just removed some of that. And then I'm grabbing some titanium white and mixing that into uh, the, the, the the brush which I haven't cleaned and just popping a couple of highlights on there so it's not it's not kind of exactly as it is but it's just a hint that those things are present returning to the eyes I've mixed up again ultramarine blue with just a touch of um, burnt umber I'm going to use that to refine the shape of the eye here. And there's actually a second uh, little highlight in the in the eye, just to the left of the the first one I put in. And, and this particular highlight's a little more yellowy than the one I did earlier. So I'm going to add that too. And the hair, and then the hairline I've got here is looking. It's just looking just a little bit hard. So I've I've mixed up some of that dark uh, color that I used earlier with some of the dark blue I used a moment ago, and I'm just going to try and soften that hairline a little so that. That's a bit more like it actually that that's uh also just noticed that uh this ear has grown a little bit too big with me being a bit too expressive with my brushwork so i'm mixing up burnt umber and ultramarine blue again and um we'll just trim that a little bit a little bit of cosmetic surgery uh, and that's that's pretty good I think 
and I think I can just you know, maybe just heighten the, the hairline a little bit just in a couple of places. So that's way too light a colour really. Let's uh, add some more of that mid-brown that I had before. I think that's a bit better. So here's a look at the finished painting. Hope you enjoyed this real-time demo and hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thank you very much for watching.